Today, we're going to talk about the old saying, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. This idea that men and women are so drastically different often bleeds into the misconception that male and female brains are also poles apart. But how true is this really? Hello everybody and welcome to Just NASA Science Podcast. Each episode we debunk ridiculous yet common science misconceptions we find online and get just a little salty about them. I'm your favorite science teacher, Lauren. And I'm vowing my education as a neuroscientist with this episode, Nick. <laughs> Before we get started, we do want to give a shout out to GCAFIN338 for their thoughtful and kind review on Apple Podcast. Five star ratings and reviews on whatever platform you listen to help us grow and spread this good, good science to even more people. Thanks again, GCAFIN. We really appreciate it. So, for many years, male scientists used the claim that men were superior to women because of their exceptional brains. You know, just a bunch of big brain brads running around <laughs> out here. <laughs> but in reality, the physical differences don't really result in much. And these misconceptions were just used to justify men's preferable role in society. Oh, fuck. Big brain brads. Oh, man, that's good. I did not. Do you know what that's from? No. It's kind of a nod to, I believe it was Pulp Fiction, when he's like, look at the big brain on Brad. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, I do remember that scene. Yeah, it gave me my... Uh, Those big brain brads. That's, yeah. that's good. That's good. <laughs> We do want to start this episode by saying that we understand and acknowledge that there are several different genders and people might identify with them uh, however they see fit. However, for the purposes of this episode, we're only going to be referring to typical male and typical female genders because one, it's easier and we want everyone to understand what we're saying and two, that's what the research refers to it as, and we can't change that. So we do hope you understand our nomenclature for the episode. When you think about a male compared to a female, are there any differences that jump to mind? Aside from common anatomical and size differences, you may be thinking about personality differences. Women are thought to be more emotional, nurturing, and intimate, while men are thought to be more apathetic, Bold and rational. I did say emotionally devoid, but Lauren changed it to apathetic. A little more concise. Society believes men are career oriented while women are family driven. Maybe someone has told you these. Maybe you thought them for yourself, but either way, we're going to talk about them this episode. So recently I listened to Dr. Gina Rippon, a cognitive neuroscientist on another podcast and she was talking about how even other neuroscientists and psychologists will take part in what's called confirmation bias, where they already have in their minds what the outcome of the research should be. So they're just trying to find the data that fits the mold. Um, and this happens quite frequently with uh, finding differences between men and women's brains to justify commonly held misconceptions and societal beliefs. And as Dr. Rippon, like, longingly or I don't want to say longingly but endearingly refers to this type of research as neuro trash great name by the way <laughs> yes um, it's also referred to as neurosexism um, but confirmation bias is obviously not a good thing you can't go digging for data or manipulating data to fit what you think the outcome should be although that's what people do all the time when you look at <laughs> Any argument on social media, oh, I've, I've researched this and no, you didn't. You did a quick Google search and Google knows the type of thing that you like to see. So it tells you the things you want to see. Same with social media. Social media, like Facebook is especially is the worst. And we talked about this last episode, but they have an algorithm that shows you content geared towards what you, they think you want to see based on the things that you like and comment and share. Right. And so they're going to keep feeding you this information. And you think everyone else thinks this and you think that this is how it really is or what it should be, but it's not. Uh, I keep laughing to myself because I recently saw a meme where it was like actual research and it was like a scientist obviously in a code and in a lab, you know, doing all sciencey things. And then it was like Facebook. social media <laughs> yeah. research. It was someone sitting on the toilet taking a dump on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, I've never seen truer, truer image. Um, so 
personality differences between people, um, we could say, are because of brain differences. But are the brains of men and women actually different, that they have result in differences? Let's say uh, someone being more keen for the math, maths or sciences. So do these commonly held beliefs actually hold water when we review the data? In short, not really. So here are some amazingly bad myths we also found from biblicalgenderroles.com. Which is just a great website name. For science, too. Especially. Yeah. No, it's it's such a solid name. And uh, we're going to give you the link to this, um, this infographic that we found in the show notes. Yes. So one of the first things that it points out... Well, uh, tell them the title. Oh, the, the, title? the title is How God Made Men's Brains Superior to Women's Brains. So already... This the person who made this made their mind up about what the result is. Yes, absolutely. They they men are superior clearly, and one of the things they list is that male brains are ten percent larger, which is true. Men, male brains are a little bit larger. However, men themselves are larger just because of sexual dimorphism, yeah, yeah. and as a result, your brain is bigger. But if you take brain volume or brain size relative to body size there is really no difference yeah proportionately it's kind of the size difference is irrelevant and also there is no research to suggest that even though males do have a larger brain that there is any difference in intelligence men are not smarter than women and if a, if a particular man is smarter than a particular woman, it's not because their brain is bigger. It's just because of individual differences between those specific people. Um, one of my favorite ones on this, because there is that original infographic and then somebody else had made like annotations onto it. <laughs> so the original infographic says that there are eight there are eight male geniuses for every one female genius. So <laughs> the person noted that men are also more likely to be atheists, <laughs> which just had to be like like a twist in this biblical website side. I and also <laughs> the idea that there are eight male geniuses for every one female genius. Also you, like not true. It's, it's likely not true because look back in history. When a woman did science, she was burned at the stake for being a witch. When a male did science, he was lauded you know like it's yeah and a lot, of, a lot of female discoveries and things were stolen and males were given credit for it yeah. aka watson and crick i'm watching you they, you don't need to watch them <laughs> rosalind franklin has gotten the recognition now mm. that she deserves there's a college named after her i know but they're still mentioned in textbooks to this day I, and it bothers me okay anyway listen, listen all three of them did something right so you know very true um but i also love that they know Males have six and a half times more gray matter. In parentheses, thinking matter. Which is it's so funny that they put in parentheses thinking matter because thinking matter implies that the other part of your brain called white matter isn't involved in thinking, but it absolutely is. And for those who don't know what gray matter is, it is the actual cell bodies of your neuron. So your neuron is composed of a cell body and then a tail-like structure called an axon that is responsible for sending whatever signal from that brain cell to another brain cell. And if men actually had six and a half times more brain cells, more individual brain cells than a woman, their heads would be so large, our necks wouldn't be able to support them. They'd be a bunch of bobbleheads. <laughs> also, women wouldn't be able to give birth to men and men would die out completely because their brains would be so huge. It's just, it's not practical. But anyway, there, there's more on this and we could keep talking about this, but I want to talk about some other stuff. So if you want to check it out, click the link in the show notes. So we, we mentioned how complex the human brain is and we still don't know all of its capabilities and functions. Each individual brain is slightly different than everyone else's. How is this possible? There are two main factors, genetics and epigenetics. Genetics are your genes, your DNA. They tell your body and brain what proteins to make and how much of them. Those proteins then go off and exert whatever function they have, but epigenetics can alter the levels of protein by suppressing or activating your DNA. These epigenetic changes are caused by our environment. As we learn and experience new things, our brain changes slightly, 
the connections between individual brain cells can strengthen or weaken. We could form new connections between brain cells, and our DNA is expressed differently. Quick side note, do you remember that one time we were in that juice bar store up the block and some guy came in and he started just like talking to us about epigenetics, this and that, and you looked at him and you're like, yes, I have a master's in neuroscience. I know all about that. Half of what you said isn't true. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> and, it was, and it was pretty awkward for everyone. I really wish I remember what he was saying, but I just remember me like, oh, God, this is going to end very badly for this man. <laughs> Yeah, when, listen, when you say stupid stuff like that, I, I do need to call you out, especially if it's yeah. blatantly wrong. But. Nick will not hesitate. No. But anyway, the next question is, in terms of this genetics, epigenetics, right? How do scientists actually look at brain changes? Mostly through imaging like CT scans, MRIs, and fMRI. So an fMRI is called functional MRI. And they tell us how active a particular brain region is during an activity. Some people will report that men have more cell, like brain cell bodies uh, or, or neuro, more individual neurons uh, called gray matter in their brains than women. It's also been reported that men have larger inferior parietal regions or per inferior parietal lobe, which is important for mathematical skills, estimating time, and judging speed. LOL. Taking this information <laughs> and applying it without any context or additional data can be dangerous. Someone could read this and use it to justify not giving a young girl a math scholarship. Parents who might read this may use it to push their daughter away from science and math. One can make an argument for insurance rates being higher for women since their judgment of speed and timing is worse, which could potentially cause more accidents. It's very dangerous to extrapolate data and use it without any context and even knowing if it's medically relevant or, or physiologically relevant yeah and we all know that that shit just ain't true like <laughs> i've seen some pretty reckless male drivers in my day and yes i'm looking at you pickup drivers hey, listen if you have a pickup truck or a bmw why like why <laughs> every time it's every one of those time. two we're every just time. like damn you <laughs> so is the inferior parietal lobe important for math timing and speed judgment sure but does that mean men are better than women at these tasks? Well, the data doesn't really say so. So one really common idea is that women have higher connectivity between the hemispheres than men do. And one talk show even stated that women have 10 times as much white matter than men do. 10 times as much. Do you have any idea what that would do to someone's skull? Probably, <laughs> because we just talked about it with men having six and a half times more. So men right. have six and a half times more gray matter. Women have 10 times more white matter, and our skulls are going to burst. So again, we don't have the space for all that brain in our tiny mortal heads. <laughs> okay, so maybe some Greek god does, but not us. Again, we can't all be big-brained brads over here. But the idea of higher lateral connectivity in women leads people to believe things like women are better at multitasking. Wait, stop, shut up. Can, if we have big brain brats, can we have crazy cerebral Carissa? Oh my God. We got to think of a better one. That one's like too wordy. Well, I got nothing, okay? I, I'm doing this on the spot. Go on. That's all, that's, I, I, that's all. I interrupted for that. So I'm so thing. glad you interrupted for that. Yeah. Um, Personally, can attest though, I'm not good at multitasking. But however, when you compare men with a sm men with small heads to women with large heads, and reverse the role since men often have larger heads, um, you don't really see those differences. Yes, that was an analysis someone actually did, as funny as it may be. A study from 2014 using MRIs demonstrated that the difference in brains between men and women was quite stark. Men were more logical and rational, while women were more emotional and intuitive, which kind of leads to what people think about men and women. But when you look at the study in detail, the authors failed to account for size difference between men and women. They didn't account for puberty. They didn't account for puberty-related <laughs> maturation, and they didn't even show many of the non-different connections in adolescent brains, which makes it seem like the difference is more apparent or, or stronger than it really is. That's like that's like when people are like, well, I'm not I'm not lying, but you're not telling the full truth. Either. Right. Right. It's exactly what it is. It's a lie of omission. They're, yeah. they're not showing all the data, which is an underhanded attempt to make their data look more robust mm -hmm. and 
Things like that in science should not be tolerated, and I'm glad people are calling this out. Men on average have a brain that's about 10% larger than women. We said that, but the size difference does not make much of a difference. And it's really important to account for the size difference when analyzing gender differences in the brain. But unfortunately, a lot of studies don't. So in fact, a study from 2018 uh, showed that authors are more likely to publish data showing differences between male and female brains than studies that show similarities. And on top of that, these studies often don't have large sample sizes and don't always take important factors like we just said, male brain size into consideration. So as a result, it makes the data presented less valid and prone to being misconstrued or misinterpreted. Catchy headlines, even if they're inaccurate, can spread very fast. You know, there's that saying that like a lie spreads like twice as fast as a truth around the world. You know, we see this all the time. Twitter now even has a prompt, though, suggesting you read the full article before retweeting and sharing it, which I think is really great. Yeah, absolutely. But then I do get a little mad. It's like, damn, Twitter, I did read this. Leave me alone. Like, get, off, <laughs> get off my back. Get off my back, mom. <laughs> Another really important factor in brain studies is the woman's age. More specifically, women in menopause. Menopause is known to have changes in the brain that may influence the results of a study due to hormonal changes. Do you know what any of those are? I'm like very curious. Specifically, no, I, I don't. Because I talked to your mom today. She goes, let me tell you something. My brain isn't what it used to be. Yeah. I'm just not as sharp anymore. Well, no, that's just my mom not being particularly intelligent. No, that's not true. Uh, I will say, though, pregnancy brain is a thing. And for those who don't know what pregnancy brain is... For, for some reason, and I, I have an idea of why, but women, when they become pregnant, tend to become more forgetful of things or maybe not as sharp as they normally are. And I'm sure there are some pregnant women who don't experience this at all, and I'm sure there are some who do. But it's thought to be due to a decrease in gray matter, probably because the growing fetus needs a ton of energy and your brain uses about a fifth of your energy, about 20% of energy consumption. There's not enough energy to go around. Yeah, them. so I think your your body prioritizes the growing fetus and you know some Oof. of the brain sacrifices. I just can't imagine what that looked like for me. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> not good. Not good. <laughs> not good. Uh, but what about studies that show gender differences at an early age, like two to three months? There may be some differences in brain structure. And when we talk about brain structure, we're talking about this thing called morphology. So if you ever see that, we're talking about the structure, how something is formed. But the question of are these differences meaningful or impact disease prevalence, we don't really know. In fact, one uh, there's uh, several studies actually that suggest differences in male brain structure can actually be one of the causes for males being four times more likely to develop autism, which I think is interesting, but is the data really there? Do we know that for sure? No. Is it more likely or is it probable that females are being underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed? That's also likely um, a reason why the, the difference between males and females with autism is so high, but you know, th there's a lot more research to be done on that. And in fact, Dr. Gina Rippon thinks that part of the reason we see these differences in the brain is less about our biology and more about our cultures. She argues that our cultural attitudes about the potential differences between men and women have a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I personally agree with this. And I do think to a certain extent, um, we kind of put these roles on to young children and kind of put them into a box from an early age. You know, that goes back to our desire to classify things and need to fit into a group or shapes, um, have us think that, you know, especially at an early age, like we love to classify things. Yeah. So, you know, if girls are given dolls and boys are given blocks and building sets, they're already being set up and trained in certain patterns and behaviors. And it even begins, begins before they are born. Like we already begin to put them into these gender roles. We buy pink clothes when we know someone's pregnant with a girl and, and dresses and then blue and green for boys and even look at every single gender reveal party if it's a girl the smoke or the cake or the balloons are pink 
And if it's a boy, they're blue. Like even before they're born, we're already assigning them these roles. Right. And right. when you're trained like that from birth, it's really hard to get your mindset out of these like um, societal ideas. They're yeah. so ingrained. We have the holidays coming up. And for those who celebrate Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah, uh, which it's currently. And think about the gifts that children get. What do, what is, what do little girls get? Dolls babies like you're, oh, you're i hate that you're giving a, a, a two-year-old a three-year-old girl a baby to take care of and be like here this, this is, is what you do right and you're giving boys you know action figures or you know trucks yeah you know, whatever and it's like this is what you do and it's like why who cares let them it's a, they're a child let them play with whatever toy makes them happy at the moment right but that's me. I don't have kids, so what do I know? I personally am just trying to make both my niece and nephew just big animal lovers. Like, that's my big push. So everything I buy them is like, book about animals and yeah. zoos. Or, hey, I bought you both a different type of, slightly different types of vet sets <laughs> to play with. <laughs> yeah. So that's my secret agenda for them. <laughs> Mine, for if you and I decide to have children, would be to teach them both how to defend themselves. That's something that I think, honestly, women probably need to know more here's than a, men. Here's a jujitsu gi for a newborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir. Like that's that's my contribution in in that sense. You teach him how to be good to animals, and I'll teach him how to defend themselves and also cook. Because yeah, but I, I I truly do try not to buy them toys and books that like pre-assigned gender roles yeah if their parents want to do that that's on them that's their kids we can't tell them what to do seem like we can't tell you what to do but <laughs> we're just telling you our opinion and what the research suggests and, and laura and i had this conversation recently about men and women being put into these self-fulfilling prophecy situations like are men told that they have to be this tough i'm not allowed to be in touch with my emotions person because that's how men are told they need to be and it probably is uh and i'm sure there are some men like myself i am very emotionally aware more so than lauren way more <laughs> and you have some women like lauren who like you know can uh, be pretty apathetic <laughs> and out of touch with their emotions yeah i didn't want to say it it's but okay, I'll someone say it needed to <laughs> No, I get it. There's there's people of both. So I think it's like it's ridiculous to put the that idea onto entire genders. Yeah. But I also think like a lot of our our issues, and this is just like a whole nother can of worms. But I think a lot of our issues as a society stems from not allowing men to properly express their emotions. And I think a lot of violence um, stems from that, or like is a result of that. They don't know how else to voice their frustrations and their um, and their emotions and they take it out on things like school shootings and domestic violence yeah and abs other ways. absolutely i mean it's yeah i don't i don't even want to get into this because we're, we're nearing the end of the episode but yeah that's that should be a topic for another day i think it's a fascinating interesting topic it's something that definitely needs to be addressed and ultimately changed in society toxic masculinity is a huge problem and i try as a person to break that mold I cook, I bake, I love Taylor Swift. I, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I also He's proud love, of it. But I, I, I am. I listen to Evermore all day, and I'm gonna listen to it again. Pretty freaking sick of it. I uh, too <laughs> bad. Anyway, but then I, on the other hand, I like to go to the gun range. I like to do martial arts and jujitsu and self defense and. What I, are considered more manly? Things. Yeah, so I like to do both. Then there's nothing wrong with that. And if I hear my friends. You're talking out of line or the you know the talking nonsense i'll call them out on it i have i have no problem doing it because it's the right thing to do so i try to be an example and i try to live how i think others should and how i would advise others i don't just speak it <laughs> nick will choke you out while listening to taylor swift oh no with, problem. A, with a smile on my face <laughs> in an apron <laughs> Listen, I have a really nice apron. You got yeah. it for me, so I don't... Listen. It is pretty nice. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and especially share it. It takes literal seconds to hit subscribe and click the five-star review button, and it would mean a whole lot to us. Positive ratings and shares on social media are the biggest ways you can help us spread this good, good science to even more people. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Just Nas Science. 
You can also visit our website, justnatscience.com, where you can watch YouTube videos, read blog posts, or submit questions and suggest topics for future episodes. And don't forget, we put out new episodes every Tuesday. As always, thanks for listening. Later, nerds. Later, Gator.